morning to all of you who are joining us for Trinity Presbyterian Church's virtual worship service today. We extend a warm welcome to you. Also, we are happy to welcome our own Megan Berry, who is bringing us today's message. Thanks to the wonders of technology, she is with us from Louisville, Kentucky, where she is attending Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary and serving at Highland Presbyterian Church there. Our hope is that you will be uplifted and inspired by our service and her message. Let us begin with the call to worship. God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let us worship the triune God. Like the Israelites, we often lose sight of God and forget the amazing things God has done. We may not build golden calves anymore, but we put our faith and trust in things other than God when times get hard. Let us come together now to confess our sins. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we confess that we do not always put our faith in you and you alone. We often create idols because our trust in you is fragile. It is easily broken by the slightest pause, whether that is an unanswered prayer or the feelings of loneliness. Our trust is easily displaced by gods of our making, the God of self-sufficiency, the God of hatred, the God of perfection. We let these idols consume us. Loving God, have mercy on us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Beloved siblings, hear the good news. God is merciful and forgives our sins through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thanks be to God.
Reading from Philippians chapter 4, verses 1 through 9, listen to these words from Paul to the church in Philippi. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Eudea and I urge Sintichi to be the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Please pray with me. Holy God, enlighten our minds and hearts to hear your word today and understand what you have to say to us. Move the spirit within us today. Amen. Today's second reading comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 14. Listen now for a word from God. When the people saw that Moses delayed to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us who shall go before us. As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. And so Aaron said to them, Take off all the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf, and then said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices of well-being and the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. Now the Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people, whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt, have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it, and said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation." But Moses implored the Lord, his God, and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that God brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath, Change your mind and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven 
and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed God's mind about the disaster that God planned to bring on God's people. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our passage today is the infamous story of the golden calf that the Israelites build while they are in the wilderness and Moses is up on Mount Sinai. In the beginning of this passage, we learn that Moses has delayed coming down from the mountain. He's been up on this mountain before, but not for this long. In this particular time, Moses was up on the mountain for 40 days. And in those 40 days, the Israelites became scared and lost their faith because their leader had seemingly abandoned them. And the Israelites are hurt, confused, scared, and they need someone to help them. They have been uprooted from their homes and are now wandering the wilderness on their way to the promised land. And they're doing all of this completely out of faith to God and being led by Moses. They have seen miracles happen. Uh, when manna fell from the sky and water came streaming out of a rock. But those miracles haven't become a part of who they are yet. The vivid memories of living in oppression as slaves is still a bigger reality for them than these miracles. So when left alone for just a little too long, their fears got the better of them. And they went looking to Aaron for a new God. In the lectionary, uh, this story is placed the week after the Ten Commandments are discussed to help highlight how sinful it was for the Israelites to make the golden calf and how quickly they broke the second commandment of do not make idols. The Israelites broke this promise in a huge way but we break this promise a lot too. I don't know what you think of when you hear the word idol, but I often think about something shiny, like a trophy, something tangible that I can touch and feel and admire. This is one version of an idol, but idols can also be ideologies or dreams that we have. We can idolize ideas and less tangible things just as easily. When we create idols or idolize something, we are giving it too much importance in our lives. For the Israelites, they created an idol to worship instead of God because they thought Moses and God had abandoned them. So they created a false God to worship instead. What are some of the things you think you idolize or put too much importance in? For me, in high school and college, and even now a bit, though I think I'm getting better, I idolized my GPA. It was the most important thing to me. Ask my parents, they'll tell you yes. If I could have a stellar GPA, then I could make it in the world. I was set. I was golden. An excellent GPA was the most important thing. So I thought. More important than church. More important than my friends. More important than the hobbies that I had. That number. And idea of what that number could do for me. Quickly became an idol in my life. And I recognized that it was an idol because I saw how it hurt my relationship with the church and with God and how I was willing to put it first over literally everything else. When I should have been putting my love for God first and letting that drive my life. And I'm not saying that striving to do well in school is bad and that you shouldn't worry about getting good grades and trying your hardest. What I am saying though 
is that it becomes an idol and something bad and toxic when it consumes your life. When that is the only thing you are fixated on. Because y'all, we are so much more than a number. Whether that number is our GPA, our weight, our paycheck, we are so much more than this number that society has given us. And when we forget this, that we are so much more, and we idolize these things, it's not only harmful to us, but God is hurt too. Because God loves us so, so very much and doesn't want to see us engaging in this harmful behavior that we often don't realize we are doing. Recognizing idols in our lives and working to dismantle that idol is difficult work. I first realized how much I idolized school and grades when I was in college and working at Heartland Camps over the summer. And it wasn't until seminary that I really started to feel like I was making progress with dismantling my obsession with school and GPAs. It's difficult because we often create idols subconsciously. It's a safety feature in our brains to place important things that we feel like we can control or can have an impact on. We often don't do it intentionally to be malicious or because we want to break the second commandment. It just happens because we are human and in our humanity is sinfulness. And while we may have individual idols, there's also communal idols and ideas that become idolized in communities or nations. In our story today, it wasn't just one person who was scared and asked Aaron to create a golden calf. Everyone was scared. And in their scared and hurting states, they collectively came together and decided to create this idol. And we are communal people, which is good. But that can also lead to communal sins together. What are some things that you see communities idolizing? It could be this community at Trinity or our nation, the United States, or another community that you are a part of, a soccer team, uh, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, something in school, all of those. Just like the Israelites, we do not create communal idols intentionally. Rather, it happens because we are scared and probably want to feel like there is something within our reach and control that we can manage. It is good for groups and communities to have goals and things to strive for, but it no longer becomes good when those goals and wants become obsessive and become the thing that will save the church, that will save the Boy Scouts, that will save the nation. I know a lot of churches idolize young families. They think if we can only get the young ones to come back, then we'll finally be okay. And they forget about all of the good work they are doing. And they forget to worship and love God in the midst of all of this. And it's when this belief becomes this thing other than God can save us, or this thing other than God is the one thing we need. We have created an idol. Fortunately, God is so, so, so good to us. God loves us so incredibly much and gives us so much grace. God sees us being little idol factories and loves us anyway. And it's just waiting for us to realize our idols and start doing the hard work of dismantling those idols. God loves us and forgives us, hear that. But we still gotta do the work to love God back and make sure 
God is the important one. Not a GPA. Not the amount of children running around the church. Not the church budget. God is the one who saves us. And that is worthy of all the praise and worship. So I encourage you today to think about what your personal idols may be, what idols you may see in your community, and start that hard work of dismantling those. Find the ways to redirect your thoughts to God. For me, I had to remember, and still have to remind myself every single day, that God will love me and cherish me no matter what. If I get an A or a B or an F, God still loves me and will always love me. In our community, it could simply be asking the question, how does this goal or need help us worship God and love God more? Or answering the question, are we forgetting to put our faith in God first? Community discernment is hard work, but it's good work too. And it won't be easy, but we have each other and we have God who loves us and cherishes us oh so much and always will. Amen. Please pray with me. Gracious and loving God, we know you hear our cries and our prayers. You hear our joys and our laughter that are sometimes tinged with sadness. We come to you today in prayers that are full of both joy and sorrow. We pray for our leaders, our national leaders, local leaders, church leaders, school leaders, leaders that are in all areas of our lives. We pray that they may lead with sincerity and with their hearts oriented towards the good of all people. We pray that they have ears to listen to the needs of those around them and make decisions that are good and helpful for all, not just the few. We pray for your creation, that we may remember to care for it and help sustain your world for future generations. We pray that the destruction we have caused on this planet can be healed and restored to a livable condition for our children and grandchildren in all generations to come. We pray for our community for everyone who is struggling with online school and online work and online everything. With those who are wrestling with their productivity levels and just trying to find that extra energy in this pandemic. With those who are lonely and feel they have lost their community during this scary and novel time. We pray for those who are suffering, Lord, in so many ways. With COVID, the flu, cancer, chronic disabilities, just every illness imaginable. Those who are suffering from homelessness, who are hungry, who are uninsured and scared, these are hard times, God. Give us the strength to keep going and to find the good in our world. 
And we pray all of this to you through Jesus, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the Financial Secretary of Trinity Presbyterian Church. The session members and I want to thank members who have continued to send to Trinity their pledges and contributions during this difficult time. The work of the church continues thanks to your generosity. Please continue to send pledges and contributions to Trinity Presbyterian Church, West 1400 Sheely Road, Independence, Missouri 64052. We appreciate your help so much. Friends, remember God loves you so, so much. And dismantle those idols and love God back. And as you dismantle those idols, may the deep peace of God and the movement of the Holy Spirit guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ forever. Amen.
You put an extra note in there. Yeah, I, I sure did. Okay. Okay. Take two.